money I've been driving around in my car Looking for some kind of open bar It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Got no money But I'll work it out with my charm Having a good time and doing no harm It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Hey now Hello honey, and welcome to the Nerd in Motion. I'm on a run here, boys and girls. I'm on a run. So whilst I've got some time, I'm I'm, I'm churning out the videos. Um, so uh, a chap, Sterling uh, Wheel, who's a truck driver in America, uh, told me about this story uh, yesterday, and I thought it's pretty epic. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll get on and tell you what it's all about. Um, Essentially, you all know about the eco boom engines. Well, we have another issue uh, just showing you that basically not everybody, uh, every manufacturer has got it perfect. Even the best get it wrong. Uh, so t this is basically for Toyota and Lexus. They've recalled 102 vehicles. Uh, base the, the engine. So they they had a 4.2 liter V8, which is a fantastic engine. Like one of the most amazing engines I think you can get out there. Absolutely bulletproof, um, and yeah, they just don't really go wrong. If you look after them, they just keep going and going. Now, what happened is they changed that and they went for a V6 with twin turbos, probably because of emissions, and they're having problems and. It says here, Toyota is recalling 102,000 vehicles with both Toyota Tundra and Lexus LX affected between 2022 and 2023. The recall stems from machining debris left in the engine during the manufacturing process, which can cause the crankshaft main bearings to, to fail. This in turn can cause engine knock and an ability to start or loss of power whilst, whilst driving. Um, and then it says about Toyota how they're recalling it and then they actually put in a link on the car and driver to the actual recall uh let me just see if i can move it so you can actually s no that is not one this is the one there we go uh so this is the actual recall that um toyota have submitted and um it it explains exactly that. It just says uh, the recall covers vehicles equipped with a V35A engine of particular configuration that were manufactured during a certain period at particular engine plants. So, which I, I understand to be America, and we did look yesterday. Where was the other place? I think it is Japan. Covers vehicles equipped with the V35A engines of a particular configuration that were manufactured during a certain period at particular engine plants. The V35A engines of this co configuration manufactured after this production period were manufactured with new or improved process that better clear up machine debris. Other Toyota or Lexus vehicles sold in the US are not equipped with this engine or have a different V35A engine configuration with a different pressure on the main bearing some of these vehicles equipped with different engine configuration have hybrid powertrain systems if engine failure occur occurs on a hybrid vehicle the vehicle continues to have some motive power for limited distances and the driver receives continuous audible warning warning lamps and visual warning messages toyota is unable to estimate the percentage of the involved vehicles that actually contain the defect described in section 5 however as the nhtsa manufacturer portal requires an inter integer value be entered toyota has entered the value one in response to the question for the port purpose for the purpose of the report one means unknown okay so that is basically they're not entirely sure how many engines are affected on the hybrids so if you want to go and have a look at that document i will put that in the description for you so you can check it out because obviously if you're looking at this video you might have one of these toyotas in, in america and I know you have the main crankshaft with these lobes which actually have 
they're, they're effectively weights to ba to balance and offset the fact that the crank is not straight. And these are the connecting rods which connect to the pistons. And the pistons have basically, these are called small end bearings. And then you have the crankshaft bearings. So this is what it drives all the power in your engine. And that's why it's so serious. So when you get knock, it's basically where these bearings here fail. Um, you can have big end knock and you can have rod knock. Um, which is sometimes you'll get like a clattering when the bearing in the top fails. Um, this is what the assembly uh, looks like. Let's see if I can... There we go. That That's what the assembly looks like. So you've got... These are the bearings uh, which basically you take the caps off the conrods here. Um, if you're ever doing this, if it's uh, certain types, they literally just smashed... They've got cracks in them already so that the surface area is bigger. So you, if you ever take one off, some comrades are literally one use and you're done. Um, or you have to make sure you've got them all exactly matched up and you put them back exactly right. So they have to all be numbered when you take them off. Uh, these are the end shells. Um, I'm just seeing if there's a picture of one. Oh, that's a good picture. So that is basically your... Uh, how they're made up uh, they they just look like um, they look like little plastic uh, little metal caps but they're they're basically made up you've got your overlay then you've got a nickel barrier then you've got copper and then you've got the steel back um, and then you have obviously different types like tri-metal and then you have a bi-metal one which is like an this one here has got a aluminium bearing alloy and an aluminium bonded layer um what happens is if you look oh that's a really good picture there um this this is the crank here um gosh this is uh from some sort of big article uh oh, has a where's the picture the picture's gone um let's just get a better I'll show you on that one. Okay. So on this this crankshaft here, oh my word, that's... Ah, here we go, look at that. Uh, you'll see these little circles here. Um, so what they do is oil is fed up the crankshaft through the centre and it's dis distributed into these oil ways. And the, the, those caps that you saw, those shells, are effectively running around that. And there's like a layer of oil between the crankshaft and the shells. So when you get debris um, from manufacturing, which, to be honest, is probably not a lot. It doesn't take a lot to cause damage. So when they're casting the blocks, or I don't know if they're aluminium blocks, but I assume they will be, or you're casting heads, you can get a bit of manufacturing debris like for instance when uh, there's seams in the casting and also when they drill threads into like the head or to the block there's little bits of swarf and normally you, you can get all of that out and a tiny tiny amount won't really affect it because it gets picked up by the oil filter but obviously these the way the pressure that these must have on the crankshaft and also the fact that the um the bearings, might, I'm guessing, are probably the aluminium type. There's less tolerance for any kind of debris going through there. And basically, it's going through that oil way. It's catching inside the bearing, and it's tearing it all apart. And once you've you've removed that, that outer bearing um, material, uh, basically, it'll just... It'll just weld itself together. Here's um, this is a good picture of a damaged one. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a damaged one. Was he putting in a new one? That looks pretty, pretty new to me. At a glance, um, let's have a look. But yeah, as soon as that uh, that shell coating is gone, um, it it uh, it is done. It's done, and then it'll just. Uh, it'll just try and weld itself together and that's why the engine is effectively stopping um yeah this this is a damaged one and that they basically get ve they they can spin as well um 
What is wrong with all these websites? I am I thought I just had the world's slowest internet. Um but yeah, these this is what happens. They end up looking absolutely mullered. All all hot, this where they get so hot, they weld themselves together and that's it, it's done. Um so I think Toyota have done the right thing. Obviously what they're saying about the hybrids is you're less at danger if one fails. There you go, you can see the copper on that one. You're in less danger if one fails because obviously you have the hybrid motor to get you out of trouble, where on other ones it could potentially just seize the engine solid on the spot, or you'll start to get rod knock and then it'll just go and then it'll just lock itself up, which obviously you don't want to do if you're on the motorway, um, or the freeway is whatever you call it. But yeah, Toyota are doing the right thing. Uh, fair game to them. Um, yeah, they're, they're doing the right thing by recalling this. It can't be a cheap exercise for them, but uh, that is why they are one of the best manufacturers in the world is because they do get on top of the recalls very, very quick. Their manufacturing process is excellent. So um, don't be too stressed if you have a Toyota and, it, um, and you've got rod knock and it's a v35a engine just ring your local dealer see when you can get that sucker in and uh hopefully uh, they'll get you on the list get your engine changed out um but yeah i wouldn't have thought this would be a big issue uh for the engine going forwards the fact that they found it i think they'll get it sorted and they'll never have another problem with them but there you go um Knowing Toyota, what they'll do, they'll do is they'll they'll over uh, engineer that that bearing now, and so the next ones that come out will have incredibly strong bottom ends, and will probably do like a million miles. So wouldn't surprise me. You can't beat a good old Toyota. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching and um, put in the comments. Have you got one of these engines? Uh, how's the experience been with Toyota? Um, if that's you, let me know. I'd love to speak to you about it. Um, and, yeah, put it in the comments. Um, just a quick thing I do is uh, some channels that I enjoy watching. If you've never seen them before, um, please check out uh, Noel Phillips, who does... He flies around. He does all sorts of aviation content, and he's an absolute legend. And, uh, yeah, very relaxing content. And the other one is Shay, and Shay does, like... Um, exploring and he does some really cool trips uh, where he like does train hopping and all sorts of mad stuff very also very relaxing he's there's something about that guy that just is very relaxing um the only thing is i'm terrified of heights and if you watch his video it scares the life out of me but uh go and check those guys channels out they're just a couple of channels that i enjoy watching and um yeah uh I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll catch you on the flip side. Keep it shiny side up.